Okay, we are live. All right, the live stream okay. is rolling. Uh, Sergeant okay. Hope, if you could, Sergeant Hope, if you could start the cloud, thank you. And you okay. may begin your opening statement. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Thank Welcome you. to the New York City Council Committee uh, uh, hearing on rules, privilege, and election. At this time, will all council members and council members and council member staff please turn on your videos. I repeat, council members and council member staff, please turn on your videos. Thank you. To minimize disruption, please place all electronic devices to vibrate or silent mode. Chair, we are ready to begin. Okay, thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections. My name is Karen Koslowitz and I am chair of the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections. Before we begin this hearing, I would like to introduce the council members of this committee who have joined us today. Uh, Speaker Johnson will be joining us uh, during the meeting, but we have now with us Minority Leader Steve Matteo, Council Member Adrian Adams, Council Member Margaret Chin, Council Member Debbie Rose. And right now that's what we have. Uh, we're gonna be joined by Mark Traeger shortly. I would also like to acknowledge Rules Committee Council Lance, I'm gonna screw up your name again. <laughs> Polivi and the staff members of the council's investigative unit, Chuck Davis, Chief Compliance Officer and investigators, Andre Johnson Brown, Alicia Vassell and Rams Ramsey's Booten. Today, the Rules Committee will consider two matters. First, consideration of Rod Rodney Pepe Savonier for reappointment to the position of Democratic Commissioner of Elections for Kings County. Second, certain committee changes. The committee changes includes dissolving the Standing Committee on the Justice System and transferring its jurisdiction to the Committees on Public Safety and General Welfare, and, chain, and changes to the membership of certain standing committees and the land use subcommittee on zoning and franchises. Should Ms. Pepe Savonier receive the advice and consent of the council, she will be reappointed to a four-year term that will begin on January 1st, 2021 and expire on December 31st, 2024. Chuck Davis, our Chief Compliance Officer, has briefed all members of this committee regarding the contents of Ms. Pepe Savonier background investigation. The Board of Elections consists of 10 commissioners, two from each of the city's five counties. Each commissioner serves a term of four years or until a successor is appointed. Commissioners shall be registered voters in the county for which they are appointed and registered as a member of the political party for which they are nominated. New York Election Law Section 3-204 subsection 1 states that at least 30 days before the first day of January of any year in which a commissioner of elections is to be appointed, the chairman or secretary of the pro appropriate party county committee shall file a certificate of party recommendation with the clerk of the appropriate local legislative body. New York election law section 3-204 subsection 4 states that commissioners of election sh shall be appointed by the county legislative body or in the city of New York by the city council. It is for this reason that the Rules Committee is considering this nomination today. The Kings County Board of Elections submitted a valid certificate of party recommendation to the city clerk on October 23rd, 2020. This was more than 30 days before the first day of January of a year in which commissioners are appointed. If the council as a whole does not act within 30 days of receiving a valid certificate of recommendation, the applicable political party conference within the council becomes empowered to approve the recommendation on its own. For example, 
a Democratic vacancy could be filled by a vote of the Democratic Party's conference, and a Republican vacancy would be filled by a vote of the uh, Republican Party's conference. The board and its commissioners are responsible for the maintenance and administration of voting records and elections. The board also exercises quasi judicial powers by conducting hearings to validate nominating petitions of candidates for nomination to elective order, office. The board is required to make an annual report of its affairs and proceedings to the council. Commissioners receive a 300 per diem for each day's attendance at meetings of the board or any of its committees with a maximum of 30,000 per year. Welcome, Ms. Pepe Savanier. Would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Can we swear? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Okay, would you like to make a statement? Yes, I would. Thank you so much. Good morning, members of the Rules, Privilege, and Elections Committee. I am humbled and honored to be before this body as a candidate for the Democratic Election Commissioners representing Kings County for the 2021-2024 term. My name is Rodney L. Pepe Souvenir, and I'm an attorney with over 20 years of experience who put herself through law school while being married and a mother of two. My parents who were immigrants with a fifth and eighth grade education instilled in me an appreciation of public service to quote scripture, to whom much is given, much is required. My goal in law school was always public service. And as you can see by my resume, that is the path I pursued. I'm currently employed by the City University of New York as a university Title IX director, overseeing 25 campuses in their immediate response to allegations of sexual misconduct along with instilling a sexual misconduct awareness program for CUNY students. When I considered the role of election commissioner, I first thought of my parents who suffered the tyranny of a dictator where the right to vote was not honored or respected. It was important to them that I did not take that right lightly. And I exercised it at every election I was eligible to vote in. I was also had the thought of the huge responsibility as an election commissioner of ensuring that everyone who was legally eligible to run for office or vote could. I recalled my days working in Georgia for the 2008 presidential election, making calls throughout the country, asking voters to vote, and on election day, serving as an election monitor at various polling sites throughout Atlanta, where I was often not welcome because of the color of my skin, but nonetheless there to ensure that voting was accessible to all particularly to the disabled and the elderly who stood in the hot sun determined to exercise their right to vote. I have been an election commissioner for approximately one month. Although one could say it was a baptism by fire, it was exciting. I realized this was an election cycle I may never see again in my lifetime. I attended my first public meeting with the other commissioners and four days later, early voting began. I set out to visit polling sites, which I did throughout the weekend. I wanted to see how the poll sites were being run, ensuring that the voters were having a good experience and to see that the poll workers were staying safe. I was buoyed by the iconic New York venues, understanding the need to allow everyone to vote safely by opening such venues as the Barclays and King's Theater in Brooklyn as a voting site. This meant that the community was willing to work with us to think creatively about the voting process and how to make it more accessible. I came to understand that having safe voting sites was not only based on the Board of Election, but it was a partnership with the community and venues that agreed to allow the Board of Elections to use their space. As I observed the poll sites, I would direct line managers to accompany the elderly, disabled, pregnant women and families with children to the head of the line so they would not have to stand too long. Surprisingly, in some cases, where a senior citizen was off, off the line so as not to have to wait, they often refused. They wanted to experience the standing and proudly voting in such an important election. 
In a more compact poll site, I directed that the poll workers ensure that people were appropriately socially distanced. In one polling site, when I was alerted that voters had issues understanding directions due to language, I directed that they transfer poll workers who spoke that language to that site to add comfort and provide direction to voters in a language that they understood. In another poll site, I asked that porta potties be placed there for seniors on the line. I was inspired, exhilarated, and inspired by the voters' determinations to vote and the yeoman's job that the poll workers were doing. On election day, I traveled to polling sites. I spoke to poll workers and voters alike, ensuring all was well. I visited as many polling sites as I could. I even assisted voters. I later went to the Brooklyn voting machine facility where the polls are uh, with the polls closed and observed the police escorts of the return of poll pads, machines, and all the ballots back to the facility. I watched and I spoke to the overnight workers gathered to unload and to begin the process of accounting for all the voting ma related materials. I didn't return home until 2 a.m. I was exhausted, but it was worth it. I'm encouraged by the fact that the New York legislators have been keeping their eye on the goal of creating an accessible system with early voting and most recently having passed legislation that would allow persons, as long as they are eligible, to be automatically registered to vote upon completing various municipal forms, such as a driver's license or health forms at a local hospital. Absentee ballots being counted without a postmark one day after election day, as long as it is received in the Board of Elections office and date stamped the day after election day. I'm learning and I recognize there is more work to be done at the Board of Elections, such as making the voting process language accessible for those where English is not their first language. While there is early voting locating, more early voting sites that is ADA compliant and accessible, making all voters aware of early voting sites or the times of operations. Most importantly, having adequate poll workers who are trained and competent, allowing for the voting process to run smoothly. In my short tenure as an election commissioner, I have come to understand the huge undertaking of ensuring voters can vote. My focus is to ensure that the election process is fair, equitable and accessible to all candidates and voters in Brooklyn. I'm committed to working with my fellow commissioners to uphold our election laws, follow procedures and to make changes that will enable the election process to work for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a few questions and then we'll open it up to my colleagues. What steps do you think the, B the Board of Elections should take to ensure it meets its November 28th deadline for certification of this November's general election, considering the large increase in absentee ballots from prior years? Well, they're taking the steps actually, and it's increasing the number of people working at the sites um, ensuring that the ballots, the valid ballots are being opened appropriately, um, ensuring that where we have contested um, elections, that's being handled. Um, what slows down the process, of course, is in the election, in the contested elections, um, you have poll watchers and you have attorneys who are there who are observing everything and who raise objections. And that slows down the process. But we have adequate people on site to ensure that we're finishing and completing on time. Um, while November 28th falls on a Saturday um, and we may have that few extra days, we're using every moment um, possible to ensure that we are completed on time. Thank you. In your opinion, should staff positions other than election inspector and poll clerk be filled based on party recommendations? Well, we have the statute, the election law statute that allows us to um, hire people um, based on that process. Um, I, I think that we should still continue the mechanism of hiring people within the community because of the fact that we need a large number of people in a short period of time and using websites and all of those things might just slow down the process of getting in as many people who require training to be able to adequately have the voting process run smoothly. Okay. And many voters who attempted to vote early in this November's general election in Kings County waited in lines for several hours. 
work in Kings County due to expand early voting hours, sites and capacity at existing sites? Well, first of all, you have to remember we're in the middle of a pandemic. So we have to be concerned about poll workers' safety and the voters' safety. What we did do during this uh, particular um, early voting election, when we realized that people were coming in earlier, we moved the times that we opened up our sites from we, where we varied it because we thought we were helping the community, we moved it all to seven o'clock. And so the sites were open at seven o'clock in the morning until um, we, the last voter was able to vote. Um, that enabled us to help a lot of the people who tend to come early, um, then the site is open to accommodate them. It's, uh, it's, it's, I shouldn't say it's unfortunate, but it shows the tenacity of people. I found like, you know, a lot of the seniors um, were very anxious to vote. And so while a site opened up at seven, they were there at 5.30, six o'clock. And that's just them. And if my parents had been alive, they would be doing the same thing. They'd be at that poll site at five o'clock, even though it opened at seven. But we recognized the need to open earlier and we did it. And we probably will do the same thing again for the other, for the next election cycle. Okay, thank you. Does anybody else, uh, my colleagues have any questions they would like to ask? Yes, Chair Koslowitz. Council members Traeger and Adams have questions. Okay. Council member Traeger. Thank you so much, Chair Koslowitz, and thank you for your leadership as always, and uh, welcome uh, to Commissioner Pepe Souvenir. I want to just state for the record um, that Commissioner Pepe Souvenir, as she was uh, initially uh, someone that we were um, interviewing and having conversations with in the Brooklyn delegation and, and beyond, uh, made herself always available, accessible, um, answered every question, every single, every single member who uh, wanted to have a chance to speak, to ask questions. She made the time, even members beyond our delegation. Uh, and I wanna just publicly acknowledge that and thank her for that. I also wanna say that just recently during the early voting process, uh, there was a, uh, a, a little issue with a, a machine on, uh, in Coney Island, and I, you know, the commissioner was was made aware. And in record time, uh, there was a response. Usually, in the past, we had to wait a long time for for a repair a person to come down. But as soon as she became aware, they had sent folks down to make repairs immediately. And that matters because even the poll workers and folks said, "Wow, they never saw such a fast response." I just want that into the record. And I want to just acknowledge and thank her for that. Um, my question uh, today, and I think this is something Commissioner knows that it's an issue that I care very deeply about as uh, the only you know, Russian speaking member in the New York City Council and as someone who has uh, personally witnessed uh, Russian speaking voters and not just Russian speaking, folks who speak Arabic, folks who speak Urdu and others, but who have come to a, a poll site only to be turned away by an information desk because no one uh, could help make sure that they identify their address and their election district to go vote. And I can tell you the number of, of painful stories we've heard, particularly from seniors who, who face that language barrier and no one could help uh, tell them if they're in the right place or not. And we lose so many people. So an issue that I've been working on for a number of years is language access to have uh, Russian speaking, other language translators stationed at poll sites. And for years, this has been a battle. You know, the city council, um, actually under the leadership of former Speaker Riverito and then continued under Speaker Johnson, helped provide funding for language translators. And the BOE, in a way, resisted that funding. Then the mayor created a pilot program with the mayor's of Office of Immigrant Affairs. And there's still tension with, with the Board of Elections. And now they argue that because the state does not mandate it, that's why they're not doing it, but there's nothing that prohibits them from providing additional language services. And so, Commissioner, you and I have talked about this at great length. Um, where does this effort stand? And I know that you've been very supportive, but I think it's important to get to the record, uh, the support for Russian speaking, Haitian Creole, Arabic, Urdu, other critical languages that really reflect the, the, the diversity of our neighborhoods and particularly in areas that suffer from low voter turnout, 
because of barriers such as language access. So again, I appreciate your time and your answers today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Traeger, and I appreciate your, your comments. I'm, I'm humbled by them. Um, yes, we have had this conversation many times, and as a, um, a Haitian American, um, I understand the issue of language access. And as I explained during my statement, I was notified that there was an area where there was a language issue. And I immediately had them send people who spoke that language to that area because I know the importance of having language access. Um, I, I'm relatively new, I, I just started. Um, so the conversation of language access is one that I'm bringing to the table and I'm, and I'm pushing favorably um, for us to have that. I know that you've been working on it for quite some time and I wanna join you um, as being a commissioner and being at the table to discuss it and to discuss the importance of it and to show how it can affect um, the issue of voting in many communities. Um, so I could not say to you at this stage where it is because it's a conversation that is, is about to be brought up. As I said, I came in in the middle of the heat of the election cycle. So it was just concentrating on working on ensuring that people could vote, that, that we were keeping everybody safe during this pandemic, but it's certainly it is a issue that's at the top of my list. And you know, you and I share that concern as well. So, you know, I hope over time that you will see um, if we can make changes, if there's legislative changes to support us, that we'll be doing that. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, you have been a very uh, courageously outspoken leader in this effort, more than many folks from the past, uh, I, I'll say. Um, in the Board of Elections, this has not always been uh, uh, an issue that folks have always prioritized, but you certainly have, and you've hit the ground running. And I appreciate how responsive and accessible you have been already to districts like mine that historically have been very marginalized and ignored. And so I, I really appreciate you taking on this role. This is not easy. It's a, it's, this is one of the most critical functions of our democracy. And so I appreciate you. And, and to chair Koswitz and to my colleagues, I enthusiastically, enthusiastically support Commissioner Pepe Souvenir uh, for her dedication, her leadership. And I look forward to working with her on this issue and, and many more. And I thank the chair for her time. Thank you. I just want to add that I have 60,000 Bukharian people in my community, and I have the same problem in the Queens. And with that, Council Member Adams. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. I could get into the diversity of Queens right now as well, but I will not chime in on that. Welcome, Commissioner Pepe Souvenir. It's a pleasure uh, to be in your company today. Um, we've heard so many great things about you, so I, I definitely celebrate your, your appointment as well. Just have one question along one line, because this is, this is very, very important. It's a nuance uh, to the BOE. Many city, state, and local leadership, uh, community boards, and voters are very, very concerned about the Board of Elections preparedness uh, with regard to handling ranked choice voting in the next election cycle, which is coming up very quickly on us. So I just wanna get your feelings. I've spoken with uh, others who are involved in Board of Election leadership, and I just, I know that you're new, but on a scale of one to 10, as a commissioner, what is your level of comfortability with ranked choice voting and the mandate of the Board of Elections to serve the voters? I have to say my level of comfortability, having spoken to my fellow commissioners and heard the conversations at the table, it's, it's about an eight, nine, at this point, um, they recognize the need for more than anything, education, um, educating voters, educating everyone about it and are really re ready to work with organizations around the city um, and uh, the legislative bodies such as the mayors, um, CEC and, and the like to ensure that we educate our voters on what ranked choice voting is. Um, I'm particularly very sensitive, of course, to the immigrant community who may not be familiar with what it means. You know, every time I, I, I think of things and I do things, I look at it from the lens of my parents because my parents, English was a second language for them. And 
I being the first one born in America was the, the American who could translate everything. And I understand that. And I recognize in some communities, they don't have that. They don't have a child or, 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 or a relative who could translate for them. And having information about how that's supposed to work, how ranked choice voting is supposed to work is paramount um, to the minds of the people at the Board of Election. And so we're preparing, we're getting ready, we're working with you know social media and all that to get the information out as early as possible. So I'm comfortable I, I, working together. I appreciate your, your response. And uh, just to put that uh, again on the front burner as I have with um, a lot of your colleagues, it is a grave concern because people, we speak about it out here and we've got quite frankly, a big question mark over the voters heads because mm -hmm the very concerned community board leaders don't know what this is. And as right. to uh, up until right now, quite frankly, this has not been a priority for the Board of Elections. They've been waiting for the election, the presidential election to get out of the way before focusing on this thing that is now coming at us like a freight train. So I'm going to encourage you and implore you um, to do everything in your power to continue to prepare your colleagues at the Board of Ed uh, of elections for this freight train heading our way. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And I do recognize that. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Lance, do we have anybody else with questions? Uh, yes, Council Member Rose. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was trying to lower my hand um, before Lance answered because uh, oh. my my sister, my sister um, Council Member Adams and I are simpatico. That that's been um, my issue, uh, my my overarching concern. I, I am so worried that um, that voters that voters don't even understand ranked choice um, voting, um, and so. Um, Council Member Adams, you know, articulated um, uh, my concerns. Um, I, I want, but I did want to ask you, um, since you recognize, and um, I was really impressed with um, your answers to to the questionnaire, um, and you recognize that we need to educate um, the the electorate. How, how, I, I'm really interested in how the Board of Elections plans to do that. You know, um, it's, it's one thing to say, we're gonna educate them, but uh, we know, I, I'm a chair of a committee and one of the things the city does not do well is outreach and education, um, you know, and making, you know, um, information readily available. What what steps are is BOE going to take to actually educate the voters so that they understand this process? And um, and I, I want to commend you for being able to to you know be thrown you are, you know immersion by fire. Uh, you have very little time to get acclimated to it. I was really worried. Um, I had spoken with um, Commissioner. Uh, Ann Taylor, uh, because she was filling um, both roles for Brooklyn and Staten Island. And I know how concerned she was uh, about whether or not Brooklyn would be able to, to meet some of the challenges with, you know, um, with, without a commissioner in place. And, and I want to say that, you know, it's very, it's admirable that um, you were able to, to jump in there and, and expedite it and get things done. And when um, Council Member Traeger has high praise for someone, um, you know, all I can say is I can only co-sign. So uh, I, I want to thank you about that. But I'm really, really seriously concerned mm -hmm. about rank choice and how we're going to educate um, the, the electorate because most people don't understand it, including the candidates that are running for my seat. So um, thank you, if, if you could answer that for me. So, so what I've learned so far is, is partnering with community organizations to get the information out 
um, having materials that are in, in a basic language for people to understand. Once we, we have um, buy-in from the community organizations and spending the time to really get them to understand the process, it's through those organizations that will help train the electorate. That's what we're working on doing, along with social media, along with literature, along with putting things on our website for people to have access to. Um, so it's, it's a working hand in hand with not only community organizations, but with elected officials using everything in our power, because like you, I understand the concern of ensuring that people understand how this works. And it's not just for the electorate, it's like you said, for the elected officials as well. They wanna be able to know that they're on a fair playing field with everybody else and nobody is left by the wayside. So we're really seriously working on getting that information out. Yes, this election cycle was very different than what we normally was used to. We had over 700 thousand ballots that we had to actually count and that's what we're doing and we have to be ready to have this information so we could certify everything to have the electoral college set of the governor to put the electoral college in place so there's a lot going on but ranked choice voting is certainly at the forefront it is not on the back burner at all um, is there is there a timeline um, that, you know, is in place for when we're going to start to see some of the materials. And um, I know after the conversation with uh, Council Member Traeger, I, I know they will be in, in all of the, the representative languages that we have in, in New York City. But is there a timeline that, you know, we can begin to see this? Uh, I mean, because um, I was really concerned, like we had propositions on, on a ballot um, one election cycle, but there was no real education. And so that's how ranked choice voting got, you know, got um, voted on. And there was no real, you know, um, education um, around it. And, mm -hmm. um, and e even, you know, the advocates didn't do didn't put any money into, you know, advocating for it or, or not advocating for it. So um, I, I'm just concerned that we'll do it not in a timely manner where it'll be rushed and, and you know, we'll be trying to get people to understand it and there just won't be adequate time. So is there a, a timeline and, and can we make it really soon? Well, yeah, let's let's try to make it really soon. I unfortunately, because of my newness, I don't know what the timeline is. I know the conversation has been had. Um, and because the concentration was on getting this out, I'm not familiar with the timeline. There very well may be that I'm just not familiar with at this time. But again, I can emphasize to you that it is a priority. We understand the importance of not only getting it right for us and in, in as far as doing the election and being able to count votes, but it's also about ensuring that people know what they're doing and how they're doing it. And we do recognize that. So well, can I give you a date, a specific timeline? I can tell you that it is seriously being worked on. Well, um, I, I just want to ask you to please, you know, bring it up at the next meeting and, and you know, and let them Definitely. know that there needs to be some expedience about this so that we can get it, you know, expedited. Um, the, the educational process is going to take a little bit of time because it is new. Um, mm -hmm. We used to have it through school board elections used to be done that way, but mm -hmm. they're not anymore. So people... Um, I, you know, I'm just concerned about, about how we get them up to speed in time mm -hmm. for it to be, you know, relevant for the, the election cycle. Absolutely. It's not Thank falling you. on deaf ears. Uh, certainly your, your concerns and the concerns of many of the council members and even lay people is not falling on deaf ears. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. You're and welcome. congratulations. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Is there anybody else that have any questions? 
Not at this time. Okay, thanks. And thank you very much. And good luck to you again. Thank you so much, Commissioner, Com Council Officer, Commissioner, Council Member Councilwitz. <laughs> thank you. Okay, now we'll go on to the second topic. Now we move to talk about dissolving the standing committee on the justice system and changes to the membership of certain standing committees and the land use subcommittee on zoning and franchises. Pursuant to rule 10.20 of the rules of the city council, the committee on rules, privileges and elections can amend a rule of the council with the later vote of the majority of all council members. First, we will consider a pre-considered resolution that would amend rule 7.00A by dissolving the committee on the justice system and transferring its jurisdiction to the committee on public safety and general welfare. The chairperson of the standing committee, Rory Lansman, resigned from the city council on November 4th, 2020. This rule change requires a majority vote of all members of the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Elections pursuant to Rule 7.70A and a majority vote of all council members pursuant to Rule 10.20. Today's second pre-considered resolution pursuant to that same power amends Rule 7.00A by changing the membership of certain standing committees and the land use subcommittee on zoning or franchises. This rule change similarly requires majority vote of the Committee of Rules, Privileges and Elections pursuant to rule 7.70 and a majority vote of the councils pursuant to rule 10.20. Do any members have any questions? No questions? Council Member Rose. Thank you. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to, to um, a, a little clarification about moving the justice committee um, into public safety and general welfare. Um, I, I, I thought that parsing, you know, the justice system um, out from um, public safety um, actually made, made good sense in terms of the fact that uh, we were looking at different uh, criminal justice um, reform um, as separate and aside from uh, just oversight of of the of public safety of, of the police department, um, I'm just not sure why it's being um, pushed back into public safety. Uh, I, I think that they're very broad and and both have enough substance um, and enough. Uh, uh, there's a need for oversight of, of these two systems, even though they're, um, they're symbiotic, but, they're, but they are um, separate and, and different. I'm just, I'm just not sure or why we're precipitating, you know, putting it back into public safety. Um, and if it's just because of the loss of the chair, um, I, I think that then we should look at, <laughs> at, you know, finding a chair for it, not dispersing, you know, with it. Um, I, I just, I'd like some clarification about why we're, we're making this decision. Who can answer that? Am I, am I out of order? Is that an out of order question for this format? Council Member Rose, you are not out of order to provide a little bit of clarification there had been a number of shifts in the jurisdiction of the committees during this term, including uh, that there used to be a committee on juvenile justice and that committee mm -hmm. was dissolved. And then its jurisdiction was spread out uh, 
to the justice system and the justice system got additional jurisdiction and the justice system has been created uh, in the not so recent past. Right. And when the justice right. system was created, right. uh, its jurisdiction was taken from public safety. So uh, the jurisdiction is simply returning to committees that had previously had it. And where for general wel welfare, where it makes sense from uh, since ACS is already in general welfare, now we're adding a second component to ACS with the other components of ACS so that they're all in the same place. That kind of sounds like double speak to me, but <laughs> maybe I'm, um, I, I, just, I just think that the criminal justice system um, is, is broad enough to have its own, you know, its own committee, you know, and oversight. But I'm, I'm not going to belabor the point. I, I just, I just wanted to know. Um, uh, I, I just want to make sure that those, those topics, those um, the very important justice reforms that we've worked so hard to um, to get, um, aren't watered down um, by being put into, you know, different different um, committees that have have so much to deal with that it will just I don't I don't want it to get the importance of it to get you know convoluted and and overlooked uh, so I'm, I'm fine I'm done I just needed clarification thank you okay is okay. that is that so anybody I, I, else? But I, I I won't be voting for that. Okay. Thank Anybody you. else have anything they want to say? Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask the clerk to call the roll. Sure. Good morning. Still morning. Good morning, everyone. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on rules, privileges, and elections. The items are coupled. Chair Kozlis. I vote aye on both. To clarify, there are three items. There's Ms. Pepe Souvenir's nomination and two different resolutions on committee changes. Okay, sorry. No, no, no. Just want to make sure that all the members know what they're voting on. Okay. I vote aye on all three. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Council member Chin. Aye on all. Okay, Jason. Traeger. I vote aye. Adams. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Council member Rose, you need a moment. Oh, hold, hold on. Mm -hmm. um, I vote. I vote um, no on um, consolidating the committee, the justice system, and um, and definitely I on um, on the appointment, reappointment of Commissioner mm -hmm. Pepitunia Nia, and um, and for the other amendment to the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. One moment. We're okay, going to hold this vote open. Jack Hodgwood, announce the results. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to hold the vote open. You can announce the results, but we're going to hold the vote open for the speaker. Sure, thank you. So by a vote of six in the affirmative, zero in the negative and no abstentions, preconsidered resolution in relation to standing committees and M257 have been adopted by the committee. And by a vote of five in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions, uh, the resolution in relation to the absolving the justice system committee is also adopted by the committee. And a vote will be held open at request of the chair.
Hello. Hello. Uh, it's Corey. I'm here to vote. Okay, I'm going to call on uh, Speaker Corey Johnson for a vote. I vote aye. Thank you, Chair Kozlowitz. Okay. With this, the meeting is adjourned. Hold on. Chair Kozlowitz, uh, yeah. Mr. Clerk, can you please announce the final result of the vote? Sure, absolutely. Final vote, Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Uh, Pre-considered resolution in relation to standing committees and M257 have been adopted by the committee seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. And pre-considered resolution in relation to absolving the justice system committee is adopted by the committee six in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>